is Robert. Uh, let's see, I had a few uh, requests for uh, uh, from folks online uh, concerning this guy. This is the uh, power supply for the uh, Pass B1 new tube preamp. This is a uh, little uh, power supply unit, regulated supply that I built uh, using the uh, AMB Labs, or yeah, AMB Labs uh, Sigma 11 power supply, which you can see here on the right. Excuse me, I'm still waking up. But uh, this is a uh, unit I built. Uh, uh, AMB uh, sells the uh, board for the unit and uh, a good portion of the semiconductors. All the others are easily found on uh, DigiKey or Mouser. I think uh, Sigma even sells the heat sinks. But... Uh, I just learned that uh, you can screw them into the board from underneath. I didn't have to put these little loops in here and solder them in to hold them. But anyway, that's uh, me being silly. Anyway, this is a, uh, a basic power supply unit. You can see I'm using a uh, combination input jack, switch, fuse, here in the middle, then the IEC socket on top. It's going into a 10 amp Corecom EMI line filter. So, anyway, here's our input switch. We're going into the core. Whoops, helps if I show you what I'm doing. But uh, here's the uh, input circuit. Uh, you have the switch contacts down here. Uh, they're going to come into play later. I'm going to do a upgrade to this that I forgot about when I built it. But anyway, we're going into this uh, device here, which is a uh, Corecom brand EMI filter. This filters out uh, uh, high frequency uh, electrical interference that may come in on the power line from... Uh, uh, switching power supply devices in the home or uh, uh, RF energy outside the home it depends. Anyway, uh, something I like to put on my preamps just to keep the supplies clean. But anyway, we're going into a uh, toroidal power transformer here. And this one's a grotesque overkill for what it's... Uh, being used for, I forget how many uh, volt amps this one is. I think it's like a uh, hundred. I think we only need about 25 for the uh, new tube. Anyway, the output of it is going into the uh, board over here on the left side of the board. Oops, try and keep out of the shadows here. I put in a zillion more lights overhead, and I still have shadows and issues. Anyway, uh, down below here is a star ground, and I'm still looking at ground solutions. I'm not sure this is the most optimum one. I may end up disconnecting uh, this connection here to the uh, uh, power cord ground. Anyway, we go into the uh, Sigma board. The uh, Sigma 11 is a uh, single supply regulated power supply. Uh, it's the uh, baby brother to the Sigma 22, which has dual supply. So you can run like plus or minus 15 volts for an op amp supply unit. Since I only need a single 24 volt supply, the uh, Sigma 11 worked fine. So uh, the uh, anyway, the uh, uh, regulation or pardon me, the rectification is on the board, and these are MUR type high speed rectifiers, which I thought was a very nice point. We're going into I believe these are 4700, 2200 mic uh, 
input filter caps. Well, let me show you the schematic. There we go. So, uh, basically have your AC in, here are your rectifiers, they're bypassed with uh, uh, small value Pico caps, the main filter capacitors, which are yeah, showing the 22200s is adding up to roughly 4700. You go into a pre-regulator here with a lot of capacitance on it, input, output, and uh, the base of the uh, uh, pass transistor here. This is, it's an interesting design. It looks like he's trying to isolate the uh, supply for the input stage of the regulator from the actual pass transistors over here. They have their own supply going through. But uh, this is kind of, looks like a capacitance multiplier possibly uh, type regulator. Uh, this is the heart and soul of the regulator. It's a, a discrete transistor device which gives it a wider bandwidth, better speed usually than the uh, all-in-one monolithic regulators uh, and the input is your classic differential amplifier it's current sourced here uh, the voltage reference is here there's a current source feeding the zener so that uh, once the zener uh, stabilizes thermally there's not going to be any drift from it and then uh, the output is set by this. I believe R10 is the main one, but you have a, here are your pass transistors up here, which uh, uh, you have a pair of them for high current. Uh, since comes back, and here's your negative feedback resistor back into this input of the differential amplifier. But anyway, you set up a uh, voltage divider here, which uh, I believe R10 is what's setting your output voltage, if I recall. But uh, again, uh, questions about uh, grounding come up, and I believe I'm grounding uh, right here at the base of the uh, 4700s, at the ground side of the 4700s. But anyway, uh, many of the parts are available on... Uh, the AMB uh, Labs uh, website. Uh, most of the odd to find uh, semiconductors and things are there. The rest, I just, uh, like I said, I found on um, uh, uh, Mouser, I believe. But that's about it. Anyway, uh, so you can see here the discrete transistors. Here are your two giant uh, MOSFET pass devices. Uh, let's see, I believe these are, not sure which is the Zener. Which is, number is it? Uh, D5. So it's this one right here is the Zener reference. But anyway, the, uh, you can use as nice parts quality as you want. I ended up using uh, uh, the Vichet Dale resistors because I like them so much. Uh, these are their RN55 series uh, mil spec types. Uh, some WEMA caps in here. And I believe most of the uh, electrolytics are Nichicon. Anyway, uh, you have a little status LED. I should drill a hole in the front and uh, mount that so you can see it from the front but uh it, i feel it's kind of redundant i mean if the power light comes on on the new tube i figure this is working so i don't uh i'm not terribly concerned about that uh, this is the output uh and here's the uh the nice thing was I was able to choose an exact uh, cord connection that fits into the new tube without uh, having to use any adapters or other weirdness. But anyway, uh, what I am going to do, and see if I can get some light on the subject here, is the 
contacts for the switch. I pair there are actually uh, two sets of switch contacts, and I've paralleled them for higher current. But uh, one thing I forgot to do was add a uh, capacitor across the when I uh, put this unit together. And that helps uh, keep the uh, switch contacts from uh, getting burned and pitted by the uh, current, instantaneous current as the switch uh, connection is made. But you have to be uh, pretty uh, picky about the capacitor you put in there. It has to be uh, pretty rugged. And it's best to use one uh, type that's called an XY or safety capacitor. Uh, this one's uh, made by Vichet. And uh, it's uh, rated, I believe, at 500 volts. So it's a... Uh, got more than enough uh, voltage rating for uh, what it'll ever be exposed to. But the thing about a safety capacitor is some capacitors can short when they fail. A safety capacitor will always open up. So uh, it uh, it's a uh, nice thing to have and uh, keeps you from uh, getting a hot chassis should something go wrong. So anyway, we're going to pause things, and I'm going to mount that uh, capacitor in there, and uh, we'll get a look at that, and then I'll uh, hook it up back up into the system. Okay, so if you look now, there's a little capacitor in there across the switch contacts, and that should save it from uh, any future uh, wear and tear. So the next thing we have to do is uh, hook all this up and listen to it. Okay, part two. Okay, I wanted to, uh, here we have the uh, power supply under the uh, cord new tube. And uh, on top of it, it is the cord uh, DAC, the uh, cu cutest DAC, pardon me. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the cord, cutest. Uh, it's a very nice DAC. I was very impressed with the technical discussions on the cord and their, uh, you know, uh, multi-bit filters and all this. They're thousands and thousands of bit filters. But uh, when I got it, uh, I could hear, yes, it was detailed uh, and so on, but I was also rather disappointed because it had a uh, edgy, scratchy quality to the sound. And my... For once, I was correct in my first assumption that it was probably being caused by the switch mode power supply that powers it. There's a little mini USB jack on the back here that powers this guy uh, from the usual 5-volt uh, switching wall wart. And uh, I'm sure it costs them all of uh, one pound or five bucks to make. <laughs> if they even uh, made it themselves. Anyway, I tried, uh, the first thing I tried to improve that was the, uh, uh, this guy, the iFi iPower wall wart. And it is better filtered. It does sound better, but it still imparts a bit of an edgy quality. Sorry to bounce you around there. And that's, uh, the next thing I tried was a battery pack that I had sitting around for uh, camping to keep phones charged when I'm uh, on camping trips. And sure enough, uh, it sounded much better with the battery. So, well, rather than, uh, for a week or three, I was charging batteries and running the uh, cord DAC off of those. And then I got this guy down here that you see with the uh, blue LED. There it is. 
It's an MCRU, yes, MCRU Linear Power Supply, LDA, and, uh, God, I need to dust it. <laughs> Amazing how audio gear collects dust. But, uh, it comes with this little, uh, uh, it has a cord out the back, and they actually put a second stage regulator on the cord, which then goes into the back of the cord cutis. There you can finally see what the cutis looks like. But anyway, that uh, definitely, uh, I mean, that made the uh, cord sound a lot more... Uh, it lost that scratchy, edgy quality. Uh, you could argue it might have lost just a bit of detail that was being, I would say, overly enhanced by the edgy quality of the switching supply. But uh, the end result, for the, in the long run, is much more natural sounding. So I think it's a win. Which, of course, since uh, the new tube had been powered by a switching wall ward all this time i said well let's see what we can do about that and that's why uh, i went ahead and built the uh, the uh, sigma 11 supply for this and i it's done the same thing for the new tube it, subjectively it may have lost just a hair of detail but uh gained what it gained was a more natural, smooth quality through the mid-range and upper treble. So uh, I feel it was a win there as well. So now that I've talked about all this, let's see if we can play it. I'm not sure what I want to play, but we'll see. Oh, one other thing I should probably show you. Uh, these are the Giger cables, named after uh, the man who, uh, the artist who uh, created the alien. But uh, they're my uh, over the top, completely uh, uh, braided cable. The uh, I figured out the equivalent wire gauge is about seven, so that's uh, I would say more than enough overkill.